multi-threading videos, you have learned how easy it is to create multiple threads using the runnable interface and then the thread class and how to manage the life cycle of these threads so that our application performance improves and it can be scalable. But the creating the threads in a traditional approach has the following limitations. From this presentation, you will learn how the executor framework that was introduced in Java 5 overcomes these limitations by allowing us to create a pool of threads. Before we get there, let's consider an example of producer-consumer pattern because producer-consumer pattern is when multi-threading makes sense and uh, multi-threading can be used very efficiently to implement a producer-consumer pattern where we can do concurrent work. Here I have a bank banking application which is check processor which can receive checks from various channels it could be the internet banking a teller machine at a bank a mobile scan a customer can take a picture of his check and then send it across and then an ATM you all know what ATM is so our check processing application we want to develop a multi-threaded application so that, so that it can be scaled across machines and also it can you make the best use of the processor if we create this using the traditional multi-threading approach without the executor framework, we have the following limitations. It is time consuming. Every time a check comes in, our check processor application has to create a thread. So thread creation is not an easy thing. We will have to we'll rely on a lot of system resources each time we do that. On the other hand, if we create too many threads it, uh, and uh, there are not many checks coming in, there are several threads lying there which are not doing anything, wasting the system resources. So we don't have proper resource management. Last but not the least, how many times have we seen our JVMs running out of memory in production or pre-production environments? Our system will crash if uh, somebody sends in too many or if a vulnerable or if a hacker sends in too many checks into our application, our system will just die because we don't have a limitation on the number of threads that can be created. So the executor framework that was introduced in Java version 5 overcomes these limitations very easily by giving us what is called thread pool. So it allows us to create a pool of worker threads which are nothing but thread processes that we create. But once these threads are done with their job, they will go back to a pool instead of dying out and we creating or our application creating, the JVM creating these threads again and again. If you are aware of the database connection pooling concept in the Java EE development world, it is very similar. When the server starts up, typically a lot of database connections are created and pooled up. So when the user request comes in, we need not create a fresh database connection. We can just reuse, uh, we can use the database connection and then when the job is done, the database connection goes back to the pool. Very similar concept here, but the executor framework manages the entire life cycle for us. All we need to do is simply implement a class that we want to be run as a thread in my case the check processor class it will implement the runnable interface and then you create a pool of threads by using executors dot there are multiple ways to create pool of threads fixed thread pool cacheable thread pool scheduled thread pool etc here the example i have is new cached thread pool it will cache a lot of uh, threads and when i use a fixed thread pool there is a limit on the, there is upper bound on the number of threads that can be created. Once I create a task and the thread pool, all I do is simply say the thread pool dot execute, give it my runnable task, the check processor task to it and the executor framework will spawn a new thread for me and when my check processor is done with processing a check or multiple checks depending on how I write my run method in the check processor, that particular thread will go back to the pool and when the next set of checks comes in, the thread can immediately take those and start working. So we have multiple threads working. Everything, the concepts of multi-threading remains the same, except for we have pool of threads and everything like the life cycle, etc. is managed by the executor framework for us. So we have very good, uh, we, we have good time consumption. We improve the performance because there are a lot of threads ready, waiting, worker threads waiting for the checks to come in and they will process them as soon as they come in. At the same time, we don't have a lot of threads out there. We can define how many threads we want to create. We can set an upper bound on that so that we will not waste a lot of system resources and we will not crash because we can set the upper bound and once it reaches that, uh, the executor framework reaches that upper bound of threads, let's say 1000 threads, 100 threads, 
it will not create any more threads it will try to do the work with what it has it will slow down our application but it will degrade eventually very in a nice fashion not just going out of memory and crashing executor framework also allows us to define a thread execution policy which is how where when etc a thread can be executed i will talk more about that in a future presentation and i'll also show you how to use a callable interface and a future interface to return a value from the thread to quickly summarize from this video you have learned the limitations of creating a thread using the traditional approach and the example we took was a check processing machine where we created our application where we created a multi threaded check processing application that can take the checks from various channels and you have seen how easy it is to create a check processor task and then hand it over to the executor framework there are multiple ways as i said to create the thread pool from the executor framework and i'll show you all the ways in the all the different ways in the future but simply a execution framework which was introduced in java 5 gives us a way to create a pool of threads and it maintains the life cycle and it overcomes the limitations of the traditional thread creation process